Well, if I can begin from uh, the the stage, uh, right from the exploration and discovery that came with a lot of excitement. This is 15 years ago, uh, 22006, there was that announcement about the discovery of oil in Uganda. And uh, we have been developing this industry right from the human resource, where a number of Ugandans uh, staff from the ministry were trained from outside, sponsored by government, and we started engaging in uh, agreements with the stakeholders. And uh, we also plan to make sure that we conclude the, we develop uh, both the upstream, midstream, and the downstream together. So we had to uh, engage ourselves in kind of uh, agreements, uh, which agreements have been uh, signed by all the stakeholders. And uh, at the upstream, we also planned to have a refinery because we wanted to add value, because we have plans to develop an industrial, uh, industrial park in the oil region. And this industrial park will have a, a second international airport for Uganda where we'll be seeing cargo planes flying in and flying out. Again, this gives an opportunity for a wider space to engage in business, in agriculture, in tourism, in uh, uh, hospitality, all that in the oil region. And uh, we planned for the refinery because we wanted the industries to come out. Um, in agri agriculture, we are targeting fertilizers and all that. So the refinery is a consortium and uh, we are ready. We have a roadmap which we are following. And uh, we know that uh, as we develop the production at that stage, we will be seeing um, the first licensing round came with two uh, production areas. Uh, Tilenga production area will be producing 190,000 barrels a day, and Kingfisher will be producing 40,000 barrels a day. But because I've talked about the refinery, we have uh, provisions for 60,000 barrels a day to be uh, processed through the refinery. That means the pipeline, which we also worked on as a, as a company, uh, will be transporting 200,000 barrels a day. So upstream, midstream, and downstream has been planned together. So the chances of investment have been at those three levels. There are people who are engaged in production in the first uh, licensing round, uh, uh, contracts have been awarded now, a lot of activity is taking place. And uh, um, at the downstream, of course, we are providing for storage terminals, where Uganda National Oil Company is the one that is going to do business on behalf of government. And they are the ones in charge of the Kampala storage terminal, which will be receiving processed uh, refined product from Hoima, where we have the refinery. So that means we need to construct a pipeline between Hoima and the Mpiji in Uganda that will be transporting the, the finished product. But there is also a crude oil pipeline which is going to transit through Tanzania to the port, Tanga. That ECOP or the East African Crude Oil Pipeline has four shareholders. Uh, the producers, this is the Total Energies and uh, operating from Tirenga, who will be producing 190,000 barrels a day. And then King uh, Sinok, which is operating at Kingfisher. Plus, the United Republic of Tanzania, their na national oil company like Uganda National Oil Company are also shareholders in the pipeline business. So we have uh, done the necessary legislation as stipulated in uh, a number of agreements that we signed. For example, the management of the transportation. We have a tariff transportation agreement that we signed. 
we know how much a barrel will cost. We had to put that in enabling legislation because again, in the production sharing agreement and in the host government agreements, there is a requirement for the implementation legislation to be done by both Tanzania and Uganda. Like I was explaining that Tanzania is ahead of uh, Uganda in terms of this enabling legislation, and I must congratulate them. They have even provided for land at Tanga, where we are going to build the, the, the ports and the port facilities. But Uganda is also moving on because we have seen the bill out of cabinet, we have presented to parliament, we have interfaced with the Natural Resources Committee of Parliament, and that committee is now interfacing with other stakeholders in terms of consultation. So we are moving on that. Um, well, I can say that uh, whoever wants to invest right now will have to get subcontracts from the key contractors that have got the contracts from Total Energies. There are contracts therein that uh, companies can get. But also, we are moving on on the second round licensing, where we are waiting, we are doing now bid evaluation. And by end of uh, this year, end of uh, uh, this month, I think we'll be able to know or to get the outcome of the bid process. In the future, we will do a third round. We are going on with our mission of developing our natural resources because we are targeting to get money worth uh, 12 to 15 billion US dollars, which money we have targeted to invest in infrastructure development and also uh, ICT inclusive. And you know what ICT does in the current business. So we are eyeing this uh, industry as the one of that that will spur development in uh, other sectors, agriculture, health, transport, and, and all that. So that's why we are saying that we have to be tolerated and be allowed to move cautiously, uh, knowing the fact that we need to respect climate change and the environment, we need to make sure that we suppress on uh, those areas which uh, injure the environment. Yes, that's where we are. You can be at the lookout. We will be advertising on international media for the third round licensing. We've done further exploration in uh, northeastern Uganda, that is Karamoja area and uh, we expect oil in those areas. And I talk with confidence that you will see a third licensing round. I am happy to note that uh, people are looking at us, they are looking for us, expressing interest in investing in Uganda. Uganda is a destination for this kind of investment. We have mineral resources, which we've not been able to talk about. We have uh, a lot of opportunities in solar energy investment and uh, hydropower investment. We have done a lot in power generation. We still have a gap in power distribution. So power distribution is another area where one can come and think about investing in Uganda. Transmission, substation development is also another, another, another area. Uganda still has areas which are far away off the national grid. So if we develop these mini grids, we will be in the right direction of fighting energy poverty. The investment climate is favorable. Uganda has the youngest population, I think, on the continent, or not, not the world. We, we have the youngest uh, population. This population is trainable. We have more than 40 universities which churn out graduates every year. And we have a duty to make sure that we have provisions for these trainable young boys and girls by um, attracting investment. We have a national content law 
you will excuse me if you want to invest in Uganda, you have to follow this. There are areas which are ring fenced for Ugandan companies. And I think this happens everywhere. And we need to protect uh, our Ugandan companies. We need to nurture them. We have a regulator, Petroleum Authority of Uganda, which makes sure that uh, the ring fenced contracts have been awarded to Ugandan companies. We have the goodwill for the investors. From the president, from the legislators, the goodwill is there. Uganda is a destination to whoever wants to come and invest. Tourism attraction. We've been uh, hosting many huge conferences from Chogam, OIC, you know, all those huge conferences. So that means that Uganda is really favorable. The climate is a tourist attraction itself. And uh, yeah, I welcome everybody who would like to come and invest in Uganda. Right now we have 1,680 megawatts on the national grid, but consumption is at 7, 730 megawatts. That means we have that quartz excess power. What makes, makes it excess is because we have not distributed it. We have not done the last mile connection. But if we are to do the connection, that power is not enough. So we, yes, we are still continuing investing in power generation. But because of that excess power in quotes, I feel um, obliged to use it to connect to the consumers. But we, we also uh, export to our neighbors. We export to Kenya, we export to South Sudan, we export to uh, Northern Tanzania, we export to Rwanda, we, we have plans. To, we are building the infrastructure to export energy to DRC. So we have that potential. We are central and strategically positioned as Uganda. We are land, land linked, not landlocked. We are land linked. You can actually put your base in Uganda and operate in South Sudan, Somalia, Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, DRC, operating from Uganda. That is the market around us. In some African countries, it has been instability, security of their investment in some African countries. But I know that uh, the Security Council of the African Union is working on that. We've been combining support to help our sister countries in Africa, again, following our ideology of Pan-Africanism. You will see Uganda, Rwanda, joining hands to help Somalia. You'll see us in Burundi. You'll see us intervening for stability. So I think uh, some companies still have the old bad days of turmoil. Like for my country, you talk about Uganda, somebody will remind you of Idi Amin. Idi Amin, they think Idi Amin is still in Uganda, okay? So I just want to encourage them that uh, um, basically, generally speaking, Africa is stable, save for a few isolated cases in isolated countries, and Africa is handling it. It will not stay forever. The other thing on renewable is um, renewable like solar is expensive. So most of the companies would like to see a take or pay provision in the power purchase agreement. And now pressures from parliament, they are like they are tired of paying for power which we are not consuming. Just in case you have constructed the power generating plant, the solar, the solar plant, 
before government has provisions of evacuation of that power. So you have finished the uh, construction of the production. You are stranded with that production because power is not being evacuated because of lack of infrastructure. So year in, year out, you pay. Take or pay provision. That is a challenge because these developers borrow money from banks and the bank would like to see an arrangement which um, um, indicate clearly that money will be paid back. Okay? So that means as governments, we have to make sure that we plan concurrently generation and transmission and distribution. And Uganda is merging the three companies that have been uh, one generating, another one transmission, another one on distribution, so that they can plan together under one board. This will help us cure the challenges of take or pay provision. Legislation, law provisions, the key foundation is the policy, is the provision. The policy we took to see part of the crude oil processed was in that direction. When you process, you'll get raw materials for other industries. And with those many industries, you'll be getting jobs for Ugandans and non-Ugandans too. So that policy we took, upstream, midstream and downstream, is going to see us have um, jobs created and revenue collected. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I just want to assure everyone who is watching us that Uganda is cognizant of the fact that climate change is with us and that much as we are talking about going forward with our development plans in the petroleum industry, we will not ignore the need for uh, hydrocarbon capture from the atmosphere. That means we have plans. Our Uganda National Oil Company has plans to plant 40 million trees, which will work as the carbon sink. We are also doing a review of our national oil uh, and gas policy to take care of the new emerging issues regarding climate change. We also have a law on energy efficiency and conservation. We have a bill in place which is being tabled to cabinet on energy efficiency and conservation. So all those are indicators that you are moving with the rest of the world. What we are requesting is to give us chance to work out our program because we know and understand better where we are coming from and the challenges that our economies are faced with. The economy is not even, it's not certain, and these are not usual times. So we need to be pardoned and work towards that, but following our pace.